So I've been getting a ton of questions around setting up and working with icon variables and icons in the context of a design system. So today we're going to look at starting off with our icon variables, how to set those up across our brand alias and mapped collections before we move into some icon tips and tricks as well. Uh, before we lastly, uh, we look at some of the properties associated with our icons that allow you to create uh, simpler, complex, one-tone, two-tone, or even three-tone uh, icons. I'll also leave uh, some links in the description around some of my personal favorite icon libraries, so be sure to check those out, and let's get started. All right, first things first, uh, let's start off and build out our variable library for our icons, a small one at least. And just to start, we're going to focus on our information icon colors for now. So these are going to be blue. Now, my current setup here, I just have my three collections. So I have my brand collection, my alias collection, and then my mapped collection. If you're not too sure what these are, I will leave some video links in the description uh, that will better help you understand the purpose of each of these uh, three collections. But I want to skip the reasoning for that right now. So again, starting off on our brand collection, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with uh, our blue colors. So color, blue, and let's start off with uh, uh, dark. There we go. So I can see that now that is super nicely uh, organized. So here is where we're actually just adding our hex colors in the purest form. You know, we're not mapping them into their alias yet and then mapping those into the mapped collection. Uh, we're really just keeping our hex codes in the most pure form, as I'm sure you know by now if you've watched any of our other videos. So uh, bear with me as I type in some hex codes here. Uh, we won't do too many today. We're going to keep it nice and simple. So we, there we have uh, our color blue dark. And again, this can also be in your 100 scale as well. But just for simplicity, I'm just going to use uh, dark here for now. So then we're going to go with, uh, oops, excuse me, let's make this our darker. And then this will be uh, our blue dark. And for this one, our hex code will be 0056C9. And then let's go uh, with uh, defaults. So that we have our blue defaults, and this will be a 1D7AFC. Uh, Let's also go uh, with a light, and this one is going to be uh, our 549. Sorry, totally reading off a cheat sheet here. Uh, DFC, uh, all these are hard to memorize. And then let's go with a lighter, and this one is going to be our uh, 8DBEFF. And again, all these color scales, uh, ideally you already have them all mapped out. And this is where you'd also have in your brand collection, again, just the hex codes in the purest form for things like your red, which, you, which you'll use for your error icons, green for your success icons, so on and so forth. And then this one will be our lightest. And this one will be our E, B, F7, F7, FC. There we go. So there we have our blue. Let's make sure I type that in right. E, B, F, 7, FC. Beautiful. So we have our uh, blue darker, dark, default, light, lighter, and lightest. Now what we're actually going to do is then map these uh, into our alias collection. So what this would look like here, uh, let's go into our alias collection and let's start off uh, with our primary colors. So color, primary, uh, and let's go with a uh, dark. So again, very similar, but what we're doing here is again, we're assigning uh, our hex codes in the purest form where before they're just blue this is where we're actually assigning them a specific role so in this case the reason why i'm assigning them as primary is let's pretend for the purpose of this use case that the blue is our primary color for our brand again that doesn't necessarily need to be the case but that's just the example that i'm using for here and again if you have any questions on that just drop a comment in the uh in the comments and i'll be sure to get back to you i tend to get back to everyone uh, who does comment so now we have our dark, and what we're going to do is we're going to create the alias of that, uh, tie that back to our dark. And you know what we'll do? Let's just create a darker as well. So our primary darker. Let's move that up, tie that back. Again, if you watch our other videos, this is, again, a very similar approach uh, that we're taking for our icons, but the heart of the action is when we get into the mapped uh, collection. So again, we have our primary defaults, and we're going to set that back to our defaults. Let's go with a light, and then we're going to create the alias of that, and this is where we get into our light. Let's go with a lighter. Again, make sure to tie it back to the brand collection and not in the alias collection, and then uh, let's go with a lightest. There we go. Let's create the alias of that, and then we have our lightest. So beautiful, nice and simple. Uh, again, just tying the colors in our alias collection back into uh back to our brand collection and now comes the fun stuff we're actually mapping these into our mapped collection now 
when it comes to uh, your icon variable, something you might have seen uh, in the past is what we would really just have is just an icon information. We'd really only just have, you know, one color associated, which in this case would be usually just our default color. Oops, no, don't want to tie it back to the brand. Always the alias. Good thing I caught that there. Um, but what we're actually going to do this time is later on in this video, we're going to get into some more complex iconography. We're actually going to have multiple different colors and two-tone icons associated with it. So this is where it actually gets a little bit more complex. So I'm going to start off with our icon information, our, and then our primary. So we're actually assigning different roles within our maps grouping. So we have, when it comes to our icon information color, we're going to have a primary color, a secondary color, and a tertiary color. And again, this is where we can also get into some light mode and dark mode uh, stuff as well. So in the case of our icon primary, I'm actually going to set this to our light, our primary, not our color blue light, our primary light. See, I always make that mistake too. So if you make that mistake, you know, don't be, don't be alarmed. And then we're going to have a secondary again, for our information grouping. And we're going to create the alias of that. And we're going to assign this as our primary dark. Now what we're going to do is this is where you can also add in your light mode, dark mode as well. So have your icons change a little bit based on whether uh, they're in the light and whether or they're in the dark. And if you've watched our dark mode video by now, you'll know what we like to, what we tend to do is really just inverse these colors. So our primary um, for our dark mode will be our, will become our dark and our secondary will become uh, our light. Oops, where is it here? Beautiful. And then here you can, this is where you can also add in uh, a tertiary color uh, as well, should you choose to use it. Um, and oftentimes this really is just a white color, uh, but you might also want to get into some more complex iconography where, you, where you're even using uh, three tones. So here we have uh, our variables set up for the rest of the video to, in order to build out uh, our complex icons. Uh, and we're gonna look at all that next. All right, so now that we have our variables set up, let's look at uh, some tricks associated with applying uh, our colors and naming our layers in a way that makes it really, really easy in order to swap icons and still have that icon you're swapping in, retain the properties of the icon that you're swapping out. So what I have here is it really just because we've already done uh, our variables for our information icons, we're going to build out two small information icons here. So we have our exclamation and we have our question mark. What I'm actually going to do to start is just add a quick ellipse uh, around one. Let's maybe make outline a five or maybe four to too thick. And then what we're going to do is let's align both of these. I'm simply going to uh, flatten our exclamation mark. Uh, and then I am going to copy and paste this here, just like that, let's move that up. And then what I'm going to do is let's, uh, let's frame these. So I'm going to frame this, let's call this exclamation. And then same thing here, let's frame this and let's call this question. And what I'm actually going to do is in each of the layers is I'm going to name these. So for the icons themselves, I'm going to call them primary. And then the ellipses, let's call those secondary. Just like that. Let's rearrange here. So let's have the primaries first. Beautiful. So let's create the component of both. And again, this is just a quick example. Let's copy, copy, just like this. Oops, I didn't flatten this. Forgive me. There we go. And this is already flattened. Perfect. Awesome. So we have uh, both of these uh, set up now. Now what I'm going to do is let's just for this example, is let's set the color of our symbol of our question mark to red. Then when I go into my layers or my assets panel, and I select an exclamation mark, what I'm going to do, hold it over the icon that I'm swapping out, hold down option, and I'm on a Mac, and hold down option until that little box appears and then let go. What that does is it took the exclamation icon, so the icon that we're swapping in, and retained the properties of the icon that we're swapping out. Let me undo that. And the reason why I have these named as primary and secondary, again, for both, again, the question icon and the exclamation icon, 
is look what happens if I name, let's say in the, let me just move these down a bit. If I change the primary and our question mark to primary dash one, I'm going to set this equal to red then. Go to our assets, drag in an exclamation, hold down option, let go. Look what happened is only the secondary changed the color because those elements share the same layer name. But our primary color did not adopt the new color because Figma can't connect primary with primary dash one. So that's why when you're working with your icons, the naming of your layers really, really does matter. So now let's go ahead and let's apply um, some of our variables that we built. So let's go into our mapped collection. Let's assign this one our primary. Let's assign this one uh, the outline our secondary. Let's adjust this back to primary. Again, so now we have matching layer names for both our question and our exclamation. And oops, excuse me. I just realized that that was the wrong icon. Set this to our primary, set this to uh, our secondary. There we go. So now when we bring in uh, our exclamation, hold down option, look what happens is it retains those color variables. So again, that's a really quick trick, uh, super helpful trick in terms of uh, why it's super important to name the layers within your icons correctly. And it's not something I see that a lot of designers do, but it can save you uh, a massive headache later down the road. Next, what we're going to look at is actually uh, if we're when we're unionizing uh, some elements within our icons, which is a little bit more complex and what we should do there. All right, so now let's look at if you're working with more complex uh, icons that actually have a union associated with them. So we're going to build two, again, just two uh, relatively simple icons that are a little bit more complex. Uh, and they're not going to look like much, just going to be random shapes, but we're going to pretend as if they're be beautiful icons. Uh, so what I have here is just this square and then this circle. And what I'm actually going to do is then union both of these together so that they become their own shape. Then, and I can see in the union, I have both the ellipse and the individual rectangle. Then if I want to add another icon over top, so let's say I have another icon here or circle, excuse me, make this a little bit different of a different color just so it stands out a little bit. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is let's uh, then put these into a frame. What I'm going to do then is I am going to name the union to primary, oops, and the ellipse to secondary. Let's go ahead and build another mock icon. So let's uh, have a star. There we go. Let's maybe go uh, with this thing here. There we go. Let's select both, union those, and then let's put um, the circle right here. There we go. So then what I'm going to do is name the union to primary and the circle to secondary. Let's put both of these in a frame. Frame that selection. So let's just say this is icon one one and icon two create the component of both there we go beautiful just like that and then let's go ahead and adjust uh, some of the colors here so let's make uh, this our primary and then let's make the other one our secondary so now if i go into again um, our assets panel take icon one hold down option and drop it in, I can see that those the incoming icon took the properties of our uh, icon that we're swapping out. And again, the reason being is what's different here is instead of actually naming the individual shapes within our union, primary or secondary, we're naming the union itself primary. So if I was to change this so that, let's say, let's go back to our main icon here, our union for this one is primary one. Let's then adjust these shapes, or these colors, excuse me. And then our secondary, let's drag in our icon one. Look what happens is again, because we didn't name our union correctly, the color did not change. So again, if you're working with more complex icons that do require a union, 
It's the name of the union that matters most, not the individual uh, shapes that make up your broader union. All right, now let's look at uh, some different properties that we would apply uh, to our icons uh, themselves. Now, for this, what we're going to do is really just take our exclamation uh, to start. Let's uh, move these out of the way. And we'll move question out of the way, too. And what we're going to do here is let's uh, just add a variant to start. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to add three variants. And the first property we're actually going to have is our type. So our first type, as we see right here, is let's say call this an outline because it's super simple. You know, you have your outlined uh, color. And what we're going to do is let's make this all uh, just one tone. So we're going to add uh, a primary and a primary and also uh, call this our primary. Now, this is great, but what if we want to have that stroke a little bit thicker? So what we can actually do is we can select our second variant, add, make that stroke a little bit thicker, and uh, what we can do is then call this uh, thick. So this is our uh, thick type of icon because, again, that stroke is a little bit thicker. Now, we have, again, both of these in a nutshell, they're really just outlined icons, and what we can do then is have an inverse of that where we call it um, solid. So our type then would be solid. Now pay close attention to what I've done here. And one thing I've actually done is I've gone back and actually officially added a tertiary white color. So in our brand color, uh, it's just color white and our alias, uh, we have it as a neutral white, uh, and then in our mapped, it's just our tertiary tying back to our color neutral white and our alias. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm then just going to, uh, inverse these. So I'm going to add a fill. And you can see that it added a white background. And what I'm then going to do is apply uh, that primary color to it. Oops, forgive me. There we go. I'm then going to add uh, a primary color. Sorry, give me one sec here. Let me screw it up. There we go. Let me remove that. Then let's click on the inside. And there we go. So then I'm going to go through uh, and apply that primary uh, the icon information color. And then apply that tertiary color to the icon itself. So that would be um, our solid icon. Then what we can do is again, really just the same thing. So we're gonna copy all these. Actually, let me first, let's add another variant. Uh, and this is actually going to be uh, our styles. So we're gonna have two styles to start. So the first is our simple, which we have right here. So these are our simple styles style simple there we go and then these are going to be our complex because these are actually going to be two-toned so what i'm going to do then is for each of these let's uh so that's our primary let's change the background uh to that secondary or the outline sorry to our secondary our information secondary and then we're going to change our primary here there we go and then select the fill which is then going to be uh, our secondary color and what I'm actually going to do as well is I'm going to change the stroke to also that secondary. So there you have it. Uh, I always get the question is what are the different types of properties that my icon should have? So hopefully that clears things up. You could also add different size properties if you'd like to as well. Uh, but I generally like to have it as just type and styles um, just to get things started. So there you have it. Those are some of the properties that I like to add to my icon component. Thanks for watching today's video, everyone. Just want to encourage everyone to sign up and join our community at uicollective.co. It's totally free to join uh, for all questions relating to design systems, Figma variables, uh, and more. We also have a ton of great free resources uh, on our website, so be sure to check those out. I hope to see you online, UI Collective.